this be one of the best moments of your life. You're listening to the Business Mirror Podcast for a broader look on business with Senior Editor Dennis Estopase. Good day. Welcome to Tuesdays at BM with Laika, where Business Mirror columnist Laika Balita shares with us her thoughts on life. For the text version online, please go to the Business Mirror website and search for Laika Balita. For the print edition, please read Laika's column onwards every Tuesday in the Business Mirror newspaper. Let's get on with the story. What are experts saying about miracle drugs? Does ivermectin actually work against COVID-19? When there are actual doctors of medicine debating on whether or not a drug works against a virus, we normal citizens suffer. You know, fake news was so much easier to handle because you could verify the information. But conflicting expert opinions, especially when it's spread endlessly by attention-hungry reposters, just good luck to us. In the early days of the pandemic last year, there was a surge of conflicting opinions on the surgical mask. Which side should face out? Was it the blue, the white, or whatever side worked? There was a shortage of surgical masks back then, so we really just used N95 masks and cloth masks. So it didn't really matter at the time. And eventually, when the whole debate was over, we all just decided that the blue side would face out. And then we had debates on whether or not cloth masks, copper masks, and face shields actually worked against the virus. You know, and each side had its own science, its own proof to back up their arguments. And until today, these debates are not really fully settled yet. But it's mostly irrelevant now, mostly because the masks are worn anyway, whichever mask, as long as you have one. And face shields are mandatory, according to the government. But more importantly, we have a new issue to distract ourselves with. We have this whole new debate. And this is about ivermectin. So it's so easy to say, just do your own research. You know, verify the information that you get. But when you do a quick Google search of this ivermectin work against COVID-19, you're going to see conflicting answers from news outlets, government agencies, and even science journals. What are we supposed to believe when the reliable sources themselves debate on science? Science which is supposed to have this degree of certainty, some degree of absoluteness. We have experts claiming that ivermectin worked on their own patients or even on their on themselves. While we have others claiming that it doesn't actually work, it's for animals or whatever. And we have others reserving their opinions after more clinical trials are conducted although we don't know when these clinical trials are actually going to finish. And to add to this confusion, in the Philippines, the FDA granted compassionate special permits for the use of the drug on COVID-19 patients, although it's still illegal to distribute and market the drug. This is pretty confusing to a normal person. It seems conflicting. Meanwhile, we have a whole other group of people claiming that this whole debate is just a distraction. No, so we don't focus on the supposed incompetence of those in charge, considering we have thousands, tens of thousands of new cases every day, and the endless announcements of ECQ, MECQ, GCQ, whatever, which is so difficult to distinguish now. With all this, what are we supposed to believe? The situation is made worse when these debates uh, reach those who are desperate for a cure and those desperate for attention. So unverified facts and opinions flood group chats, you know, on Viber and on Messenger. And we have claims from alleged foreign experts, websites with weird domain names. And we have unnamed people who, quote unquote, got this message from another group chat. You know, those messages that start with forwarding this from another group, got this from a friend. You know, maybe these three posters, they mean well. You know, they just want to spread this new information that they learned. But what are the consequences? Now we have patients trying out the drug, the risky drug. We have business people taking advantage of the demand, which is very profitable right now. And we have unprepared and confused officials just punishing those distributing the drug. But that's done mostly because they aren't quite sure what else to do. They don't know if the drug actually works just yet. Meanwhile, we have random people arguing about ivermectin in comment sections. 
they use sources without links. They just cite random people, random organizations without sources at all. You know, we don't, they don't link these supposed sources. And really, these debates are just all ad hominem debates and really just who has the better grammar. So it's been over a year into this pandemic and it's just the fake news era all over again. Except fake news was verifiable. You could just look it up on Google and you'd see what's true. But this whole medical debate on ivermectin, it has our very own experts fighting each other, arguing against each other. And honestly, it's amazing that we still have time for this, all things considered. The whole pandemic, the whole situation considered. I think you just have to remember that it's okay to say, I don't know enough about this topic or this issue to give an opinion. You know, especially when we're not experts in the first place. It's okay to change opinions when we learn new information. That's, that's the whole point of learning, so we can improve on our opinions and our beliefs. And more importantly, it's very, very important to fact check long messages from unverified sources, especially when the message involves drugs. Because drugs, they go inside people's bodies. You swallow these things. If the claim is not even backed up by real science, why would you share it in the first place? If you're not sure if the source is legit, if you don't know if it's real, why would you add to the confusion? You know, the mask and face shield debates, they were, these were relatively safer because at the end of the day, everyone still agreed that we had to wear a mask for protection and the government mandated face shields. So there's still protection there. It's not as risky as this. When it comes to drugs that are swallowed, they go inside the body, we can't just recklessly spread arguments and claims and non-expert opinions when we don't know what's real just yet. Because this could actually harm real people. This could make their conditions worse if it's not actually true that it's a miracle drug. So for now, we can only hope that our experts finally work together to figure out an answer to this whole debate. You know? And we can only hope that our government finally figures out how to manage this whole situation other than by imposing punishments and making announcements. And in the meantime, for us non-medical experts, the normal people, the average person, maybe it's best that we hold off spreading unverified information and wait for the experts to figure out what's actually going on. Thank you for listening to the Business Mirror Podcast. For a broader look on business, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Business Mirror. Until next time.